Hello everybody, it's Jim the Gentleman Crafter. Today we're going to make a new project and um, it's going to be a shaker house for Christmas. And um, you can make it for any any style you wanted to or any season that you wanted to, but this is going to be for Christmas. Um, so to get started, we're going to need about three or four sheets of 12 by 12 chipboard. And I've already cut those down. So I've got, and we're doubling up the thickness to make them a little bit thicker. Um, so you'll need two five and a half by five and a half pieces, square. Okay, you're going to need four two and a half by five and a half side pieces. Okay, you'll need four of those to make two pieces. And then you'll need four two and a half by five and a quarter. Okay, and they're going to go there. So you'll need four of those um, to make the two sides. So we're going to do that. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, pull what I've done. As I, I would normally run these through the Xyron. You can, any way you can adhere these together to make one thick piece, that's what you want to do. And anything pretty strong. I'm using um, some score tape. And this is 3 8 inch. You could use whatever you had, just what I had. I'm going to go ahead and pull these all up and stick the, the pieces together to make my uh, box pieces. And then one last piece you're going to need that I didn't talk about is one more 5.5 by 5.5, just like the tops. You actually want three, but we're going to cut a window out of this one, and I'll show you that in a little bit. So what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and pull the, the backing, put these together, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, I've almost got all my pieces together. Um, I thought I'd show you this real quick, how what I'm doing. So once again, I'm pulling the tape backing. Once again, I'm using the uh, score tape. This is 3 8 inch, whatever you have. If you want to use ATG, if you want to glue them together, if you want to use your Xyron, um, however you usually glue two pieces together. Um, that's what you want to do. So I'm going to pull my last backing. So on this, you'll see that this is kind of has a clamshell shape. It's rounded. I want this side to match it. Uh, not match it, but to be the exact same, the, the exact opposite. So the two sides that are rounded come together and form a stronger piece, okay? So I'm gonna pull those together like that. Kind of get them, get them started there. Kind of, I'm just gonna round and then, okay, it's down. And then I'm gonna use my bone folder. You could use a brayer if you'd like. I'm using my bone folder to kind of get this Kind of together and it really does make a difference if you do this it makes it a little bit stronger so i would highly recommend you do that okay so there's going to be that's the bottom of the box this is going to be the two side pieces the two and a uh, two and a half by five and a quarters go on each side and then the bottom and the reason why um, these are a little bit shorter is that these are going to lay everything lays on top of the box okay and the top of the house actually is going to be and then, um, so it's gonna be like this. And so you want this to be a quarter of an inch shorter so that the side piece can sit up here. It's about two pieces, actually four pieces make up about a quarter of an inch. And so we wanna make that a quarter of an inch uh, smaller on that one side. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab one of my favorite glues, Glossy Accents, especially for construction. It holds very well and um, then I'll show you, uh, we'll talk about structure strips here in a second. I'll get that going real good. The first thing I want to do is, again, I'm going to go ahead and lay these out. You know what? I think I'll put my smaller pieces on the top and the bottom. It really won't matter when it's all put together. You don't know where you'll be. But um, I'm going to go ahead, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my longer pieces on first. And I'm going to just take a little bead of glue. And I'm not the best straight line gluer, so you'll have to forgive me. I'll put that down here and I'm going to go ahead and move these out of the way and then take one of the sides and put it right down and line it up really good and I'm not worried about the glue coming out over the edge at all I just clean that up with my finger I'm just gonna set that down clean that up and um, kind of hold it in place for a second let it kind of bond and set Okay, so that's what I've done right there. So I'm gonna do that to the other long side, which is, these are gonna be the five, uh, two and a half by five and a half pieces. Do the same thing. A little bubble there on my glue. Come down and add a bead of uh, wet glue here. Once again, you don't have to be perfect. Obviously I'm not. And uh, let's put that in here. 
sorry, I'm gonna have to turn this where I can see it because I obviously can't see it. I'm all over the place. So, um, right there, just flush with the edges. The corners and edges are flush. Okay, and hold that in place for a second. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this up, but I just thin it out a little bit so if I paint it, it won't be too bubbly. Okay, so there's that. So we've got my two sides up. And then I'm gonna take my um, smaller piece. This is the two and a half by five and a quarter. I'll take the bottom. I'm gonna add a bead of glue to the bottom. And once again, I'm gonna add it to each end. Cause this is going in between those. So each end gets a little glue. I'm gonna set this in between them like that and make sure I'm on the right edge, right on the edge. You've got a few shakes to work with this glue while it's wet and then it sits and you have to re-glue it. And, uh, or at least I think so. It just makes it a stronger bond if you can get it in that first shot where you want it to kind of go and then set it in place. And uh, hold it down for a second. So once again, these are double pieces of medium weight chipboard. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and clean off my glue here, just a little overage. I'm gonna do the last piece. So I'm gonna put this on the bottom. Oh, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm off screen. I'm gonna put the glossy accents on the bottom. And again, on the sides. And here on the sides. And then stick that in, or adhere it into, and in between those, those bottom pieces. Let me see if I can get this up where y'all can see what I'm doing. So up here, kind of level with the bottom and the sides in. Okay, up here, I need to work on that just a second before I kind of adhere it in or put it together, add pressure. And so there we go. I'm gonna start adding pressure. So that's really that easy. You can see the inside, you can just wipe that up a little bit. It won't matter, we're gonna cover it with paper. Kind of get that going. So that's good, okay. And then I'm gonna show you all structure strips. So I'll be right back, let me get that set up and I'll show you how to do the structure strips. Okay, this is for support. Be right back. Okay, for structure strips, what I do is um, I cut a one inch strip with my trimmer out of a little bit heavier cardstock. It doesn't have to be too heavy, and it could be just cardstock, but I'm using a little bit heavier craft cardstock. Um, I've cut my one inch piece down. I'm gonna move this out of the way, and then I'm gonna bring over my scoreboard and I'm gonna score this in half at half inch. So just like that, half inch. And then I'm going to grab some score tape and I'm using the 3 8 inch. Seems to work really great. You could use quarter. I use quarter um, quite a lot until the 3 8 inch came out. And so um, you could use um, any kind of tape um, product. Um, like that. So I'm going to do that. So I'm just choosing, I'm going to do it on both sides, just both sides of that score mark. And I'll show you what I'm talking about in just a shake. Let me put it together. And I, I would make up a bunch of these. You know, it doesn't have, hurt to have them on hand. You know what I mean? And you get into something and you don't have them and it's always nice to have them. So right here, it's scored in half right there. Okay. And then I put the score tape on each side of that. And I just keep a, a bucket full of them. Okay? So that's what we'll need next. So if I know, I'm going to bring in my box back over. If I know my box. So what I'm doing basically is I'm going to make this a little bit more sound. And, and structurally rigid and stronger by adding these structure strips to it. So I'm going to grab my trimmer. Again. And I am cutting down, um, I guess about what? One, two, three, four, four, five and a half inches. Cause they're gonna go on the long ends. And I use, usually use um, 
I wonder if that'll be good enough. I'll use it for the sides. I usually use um, 12 by 12 papers, but this just, I just happen to have this. Um, uh, eight and a half by 11 cardstock around, and that's what I used. I'm gonna save my little ones. I'll use those for the little sides. This is my two five and a halfs. I need four of those at five and a half. So five and a half. So um, otherwise it would have been about long enough. These are almost a little bit too short, even though it's 11 inches and I need five and a half, which would have been perfect, but it, uh, they're just a little too short still. So I need four of those. I'm gonna move this over here. Um, then that's gonna take care of these, um, these edges. Then I'm gonna need um, four that are two and, two and five eighths. So I'm gonna use the ones that I cut off this and do two and five eighths. I can get two out of each, two and five eighths. I'll need four of those. I've got a new little blade and it doesn't want to stay in my track. So two and five eighths, and two and five eighths. And I would just hold on to any remnants, obviously not this little piece, but any of these little pieces um, for later. You never know when you're gonna need them. Okay, so I am going to put this over here. I'm going to pull my box back over and I'm just going to start on the edge here and pull up the edges off of both sides of the score tape and bring it in and line it up and stick her on, glue it in place like that. It just makes a prettier edge. I like it, so it's just nice. So once again, I'm just gonna go around the whole uh, box and add structure strips. Just like that, again. Like that, and then one more. And then I'll add uh, the two and uh, five eighths inch pieces next to the corners. I just go ahead and pre-fold those so we'll get the kind of the, the angle in there that I want. Two more, this one on this corner. I'd rather the front be flush than the back. So if there's any overage, make sure that the front is flush. The back has the overage if there's any. One more. And then we'll go to the top. Okay. So that makes a pretty rigid, strong box, okay? And uh, what I'm gonna do is we'll get the top ready. Let me get that all ready and set up and we'll go for the top, okay? I'll be back in a second. Okay, I'm ready to do the top. So this top piece will sit on top of this, but it needs to have a window with some acetate because it's gonna be a shaker. You're gonna see a little scene inside. So what I wanna do is I want to take off, I'm thinking, Oh, let's do five eighths of an inch all the way around it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on five eighths of an inch with my Tim ruler, so I can see it's five eighths, and I'm not I'm not going to really care about the way um, where this goes. 
as far as um, the ink. I'm not worried about the ink being on there. It's going to be covered up. So I'm just going to go around the whole border at 5 eighths of an inch. Okay, my pen's not working. Let me grab something else real quick. Let's see. I'll just use blue. That way we all can see it even better. So uh, 5 eighths of an inch. Mark it. Okay, 5 eighths of an inch. And once again, this top piece was the same as the bottom piece. It's a 5 and a half by 5 and a half piece. It's a single, uh, single layer. You don't need to double it up. Do a single layer. I'm going to do this one a little bit better so I can see it. I'm just going to go back over that one. Okay, so that's it. So you want to have something like that. And now I'm going to go and I'm going to cut on up here at each uh, where the two uh, intersecting lines meet and uh, cut that out. It's best to do this with a really new sharp blade, which I probably should change my blade. just keep turning it and uh, cutting on those lines but don't go past into your border line that up I have to put my head in here I'm sorry am I am I down in the film sorry about that and uh, lay it in pressure I'll probably have to go back through this and, and just make sure that they're really cut all the way through. Oops, move my ruler. About three times seems to be the magical number to get get it through on the chipboard. Okay, Let's see how good I did. Looks okay. This side needs a little work. I can kind of find where that was and go back through it. Go all the way around it. It's always going to be the corners that get you. So you want to kind of go up and cut into that corner a little bit. Okay. All right. So there's that. That's going to be our frame. It's going to sit on the top of our shaker box and we'll go around that with, um, structure strips later but the next thing we want to do is we want to paint our box um, of the color that matches your paper and in this case we're using graphic 45's uh, 12 days of Christmas and so I'm gonna go grab some paint and get that set up so that's gonna be our shaker box and I'll be right back what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, I've got some little Americana calico red paint and I'm gonna just throw some down and go ahead and just start painting so um, you want to paint your on, on this front piece, probably paint the whole piece, um, ensuring that you get inside this little window, because once it uh, has some acetate attached, which we'll have to have, have some acetate too, um, it, you won't be able to, I mean, you'll be able to see the red in this little window part and not uh, the chipboard color. And probably would go around the back side just a little bit too, to ensure that that happens. I'm not the best painter. I just kind of like to slap it on there. Okay. So that's done. And I'm not going to worry about these edges because they will be covered up with um, um, structure strips later. So some of this will get a double double coat. I am going to go ahead and just do this since I've got it out. 
and doing it. You may see it, you may not. So I'll just, just go ahead and do it. And I will paint all my pieces. Just want to show you on this, um, the box part, um, you just need to paint the edges. Okay, I got, and that's what I'm trying to get to real quick. Let me see if I can get that on here. Okay, so probably use that for the front since I've got my pin marks, so I'll make that the front. Okay, so now um, I'm just going to show you this and then I'll cut off the camera so you don't want to sit here and watch me paint. Um, but just the edges, just all around the edges. You don't need to make, uh, worry about the main body of the box on this because it's going to be covered up with paper and it's just a waste of your paint. So unless that just makes you crazy, then paint the whole thing. So I'm just going to go around and paint all the edges inside and out. So I would paint in here and paint the edges here. All the edges. And once again, I'm just speeding this through. I would probably paint the whole outside, then go to the inside. But um, make sure you paint that little rim just in case. You never know. Even though it would probably be covered up by structure strips. This will probably this is going to be covered up by structure strips. And once again, you just don't know how far it's going to go down, so I'm just going to go ahead and paint it. And if you don't want, once again, wait to waste the paint, then, then don't bother with that part. But I'm just going to go ahead and paint all the edges since I've got it out. And, and it soothes my soul to sit here and paint. So that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and paint all these, these up, and I'll be back in a second. And I love my, my Ikea cutting board for $5.99 because I finally found out something that I could heat on top of this and not ruin my mat because I go through so many mats because I always forget that the mat's there. So the main thing I'm going to work on now is I'm going to work on the frame. Okay, so I'm going to put everything aside and I'm going to use the side that doesn't have my pin marks. That's the side I'm going to adhere the um, uh, acetate to or the acrylic to. So I'm going to grab out some acrylic pieces. I could use Tim's. Um, almost fits perfectly. I may just use that. So I've got some, and I might use the blue so that y'all can see it better. Sorry. So, um, that's easier to see, I think. I'm going to grab my trimmer, and what I want to do is I'm going to trim it down to a little bit smaller than um, the frame. So I'm going to grab that real quick. I know this piece is five and a half by five and a half, so I might do five and a quarter by five and a quarter. It's going to have to come up through here and um, not interfere with that, so I'm going to make it even a little bit shorter. Let's go for, um, let's go for five. So I'm going to do a 5x5 five five square. And this is uh, amazing uh, acetate from the uh, scrabbitabadoo.com. I, I would know where to get it unless I went to them because I just I love this, this weight. It's, it's fairly heavy. But once again, if you have some Tim's or you have some packaging, that would also work. So I'm going to go ahead and pull off. You know what I'm going to do first is I'm going to grab my uh, score tape and I'm going to use quarter inch score tape once again you could use glue whatever makes you happy I just happen to have score tape and that's what I'm going to use and I'm going to go around my edges with the score tape um, just around the border like that and then I'm going to pull those up and then I'm going to pull up this uh, acetate just happens to be covered by two layers of blue film and for the life of me it's the hardest thing for me to try to get up oh it did it first call Okay, so I'm going to pull this over and I'm going to try to center this on here. It doesn't matter how perfect, just as long as you cover your window and you're on your um, score tape. So 
I'm gonna brush that in. And what it looks like on the camera is that um, this is actually the, the side that I pulled. So I'll go back and pull this in a little bit, but as long as I can leave it on there, the, the better, the less uh, things that'll stick to it. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cover the box and the plate with um, uh, Christmas paper from Graphic 45, which is called the 12 Days of Christmas. So that would be our next step. And we'll come back and we'll put all these pieces aside and work primarily on the shell of the box, okay? So I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got my paper. Once again, we're gonna really work on the inside shell of the box, okay? So I've decided to make this my back paper. And it's not my favorite paper, but what it is, is it's, it's one of the lighter papers in the, in the group, in the collection. So I'm gonna put that on my background back here. And then I'm gonna put this stripe on the inside sides, because I think that's kind of cool. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna put my back piece in first. And I'm gonna measure, so it should be around five and a quarter. It is, I'm gonna make it five and an eighth, by five and an eighth. So I'm gonna go for, I'm gonna cut this little piece off here. Now I'll start with the fresh, because I really don't want that border on there. Um, five and an eighth. by uh, five and eighth, and I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna cut this border off here. <clears throat> by five and eighth. Okay, and then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a red marker, um, which I didn't think about a while ago. I'm gonna grab that real quick and I'll be right back. Okay, I've grabbed my marker. I'm just gonna use a Copic marker. You could use Tim's um, Distress Pins. I'm going from the back side. And what basically I'm gonna doing is I'm just gonna very quickly just cover that white core. And not that you'll see it inside the box, but it's just one of those things that, that I have to do and just, you know, just to finish it off. So there's my back piece. I'm gonna set that aside. And then I'm gonna go for the sides. And I am going to see, I think it's two, let's do two and three eighths two and three eighths by, once again, uh, five and an eighth. So, two and three eighths. Probably need a couple, probably three. Two and three eighths. So by five and an eighth. Two then, two, two strips. So um, two and three eighths by five and eighth. Okay, so those pieces are ready. I'm gonna ink the edges of those with my red Copic. Just something that kind of, you know, it could even be black. Or if you wanted to, hold, you know, skip this step, you could. I just, I just can't. It won't. My body won't let me. Got to do what I got to do. So, plus I find it fun. I do this from the the opposite side of what I want to do because you, if you have the opportunity to slip, you'll slip on the wrong side, which is a good thing. If you do it on the the right side and you slip down, you have to cut another sheet of uh, paper. So. Do that on the opposite side. Just as a little finishing touch, and I, you know, once again, it may not be seen, but I'm gonna want to make sure I cover up everything I can. Okay, so that's done, and I'm gonna tape these up. Once again, probably the best thing to do is is use your ATG gun. Um, I've got score tape at hand, so that's just what I'm going to use. Um, I'm just going to use quarter inch. Go around it. it would be so much quicker with the ATG gun. Um, but I just I just don't know. I don't I don't use it that much. 
I feel like, you know, score tape, you got a strong bond. And you have a strong bond with ATG too. But I just know it's going to be there for a while and that makes me happy and so that's why I use it so much. So what I'll do is I'll tape these up and I'll come back because once again I know you've got better things to do than to watch me put tape on paper. So I will be back in a second and I'll have these all taped up. Hold on.